Good morning, everybody. Chester ARP Church Devotional Podcast. Mitch brings us in. We got Genesis chapter 4, the end of it on tap today. Great story, Cain and Abel. Be back. Gives me grace for every trial. Feeds me with the living breath. All right, well, thank you so much for being back with us. I said it was the great story of Cain and Abel. It's actually the continuation of the story of Cain and Abel here in Genesis chapter 4, beginning in verse 13. And uh, we're going to read about Cain's genealogy. And I think that's an important aspect. There's a couple things we'll note here about how uh, the sins of the fathers often get passed down. Lineage is important. We think about legacy and those kind of things. But God is gracious even in the midst of it. But uh, we'll see uh, some consequences of our passing sins down if we haven't dealt with those things appropriately. Here we go, verse 13 of Genesis chapter four this is Cain's response to God after God had disciplined him for his sin but Cain answered the Lord my punishment is too great to bear since you are banishing me today from the face of the earth and I must hide from your presence and become a restless wanderer on the earth whoever finds me will kill me then the Lord replied to him in that case whoever kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over And he placed a mark on Cain so that whoever found him would not kill him. Then Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Now, I I love Cain's response. I don't know if you've ever been this way with God when you've realized there are consequences for your sins. And you may be feeling the, the significance of those consequences and the depth of those consequences. And maybe you've had this conversation with God. I have in my life where I said, my punishment is too great for me to bear. Right, so Cain kills his brother Abel out of mere jealousy. He's jealous over the fact that Abel's sacrifice was accepted by God and his wasn't. And then he kills his brother. And God says, you're going to be a wanderer from the land. You're no longer going to be a farmer. It's no longer going to yield increase for you. You're going to be a wanderer on the land. And Cain says, that's too great for me to bear. Since you're banishing me today from the face of the earth, I must hide my presence and become a restless wanderer on the earth. Whoever finds me will kill me. Well, there's only one truth really in that, that whoever finds him may kill him. But he says here, my punishment is too great. You're banishing me from the face of the earth. What? How extreme is this response? God didn't banish him from the face of the earth. God just says, from now on, you will not be able to get yield from the ground. You'll have to be a wanderer, restless wanderer all your life. Well, he murdered his brother. The consequence is, again, this is a gracious thing. God graciously chooses not to take Cain's life in the moment. He has every right to do that. God has every right to take Cain's life. That's could, But God's prerogative is grace, not judgment. He could avenge the death of Abel immediately and cause Cain to die. We saw this with Adam and Eve. He could have taken their life immediately, but he chose not to. He allows him to keep his life. He allows him to continue on. The Lord replies to him then, in verse 15, Well, in that case, whoever kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. And he placed a mark on Cain so that whoever found Cain would not kill him. Again, this is God. God is an amazing God of grace. I want you guys to understand this. Cain doesn't deserve any of this. Cain's acting like a, a, a spoiled brat here, having a pity party for himself, complaining about the extent of the judgment that is coming upon him after he killed his brother Abel for no apparent reason outside of just simply the fact that he was jealous of, of Abel. Right? He murders him. And now he's saying, listen, these people are going to kill me and I'm being mistreated and this is too extreme for me. And even still, God is saying, listen, okay, fine, I will give you uh, a mark so that no one will take your life. And if they were to take your life, I will avenge your life seven times over. I mean, this is an amazing picture of the grace of God here. Cain deserves everything he's getting, but God chooses not to give it to him. He chooses to be gracious to him. And so God preserves the life of Cain. Cain goes out and wonders. And then we're picking up in verse 17 with these words. Cain was intimate with his wife, and she conceived and gave birth to Enoch. Then Cain became the builder of a city, and he named the city Enoch after his son. Arad was born to Enoch. Arad fathered Mahula. Mahulia fathered Methushel. And Methushel followed Lamech. And Lamech took two wives for himself, one named Ada and the other named Zillah. 
Adatabor Jabal. He was the father of the nomadic herdsman. His brother was named Jubal, and he was the father of all who play the lyre and the flute. Zillah bore Tubal Cain, who made all kinds of bronze and iron tools. And Tubal Cain's name, uh, sister was Nama. Lamech said to his wives, Ida and Zillah, hear my voice. Wives of Lamech, pay attention to my words. For I killed a man for wounding me, a young man for striking me. If Cain is to be avenged seven times over, then for Lamech it will be seventy-seven times. Adam was intimate with his wife again, and she gave birth to another son named Seth, and said, God has given me another child in place of Abel, since Cain, healed, Cain killed him. And the son was born to Seth also, and he named him Enosh. And at that time, the people began to call on the name of the Lord. And so the story of Cain continues. He has children. Enoch is uh, his son, and then Enoch fathers Irad, and so on and so forth. And so God continues, even though uh, Cain killed his brother Abel, God continues to be gracious to Cain. He has a family, and his family grows, and it has great uh, uh, potential, and it, and it fulfills great purposes in life. And we see God being gracious, and God is also gracious to Adam and Eve here in giving them another son. So the story of the Bible, even in these sinful moments, is a story that really points to the graciousness of God. And even as we see the things around our world which seem to be falling apart, we see sin in our lives, we see sin in the lives of other people, and that is destroying our society. We know that God is still capable of being gracious in it all. You guys have a great day. God bless you. Maybe that encourages you over the weekend. I'll see you Monday. Take care. Bye.